Your Excellency, I hope today you will also answer one question. What keeps you going? <laughs> yes. It, it is important. I'm sure you have, even when you started your journey, you have had many opportunities to turn back. We all have opportunities to turn back and run away from our mission. Even in the Bible, we have Jonah. Jonah had a mission, but he dodged it until the one who sent him managed to get him exactly where he didn't want to go, in the belly of a fish. So what, what keeps you going? I hope today you will give that answer, because this is a mentor session. <laughs> For me, one of the best things about sitting in cabinet is that I get a free seminar from you. Of course, we have the cabinet agenda, the cabinet papers. As a matter of fact, some of them are very boring. <laughs> I have to tell you the truth. You know, like Honorable Nankabira's papers about electricity and the kilowatts and so on, really, that's not my main interest. But the best part of cabinet is usually when you are speaking about life and leadership and sharing your own experience. It is like sitting in a classroom. I think that is what Rabogo is trying to do. And therefore, I thank the speaker of Ethiopia, a country being led by a young person. We expect that our young people will be inspired, that it is possible. Finally, when you mentor people, of course, not everybody you mentor goes the way you want them to go. Again, it is somewhere in the Bible, in chapter 4 of the book of Mark, the parable of the sower. You know, some seeds will fall along the road and the birds will pick them up. Why? Because Evil forces come and takes away the word that was sown in people. In other words, they get diverted. As mentors, how do you deal with that? The Bible again says that others fall on rocky places with very little soil. It springs quickly and you have hope. But because the root is shallow, when the sun comes up, they are scorched and they wither. Others, they are sown and they fall among thorns. And the thorns will choke the seed. They bear nothing. In Jesus' own words, he says, Still other seeds sown among thorns. Hear the word, but the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires for other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. But then, and I think that's why we are here, there are those that fall on good soil. They come up, grow, and produce a crop. Others produce more than others. I believe that is what this occasion is about. The point is, leadership is at the core of any nation's capacity to renew itself. A story is told that God sent his angels to do a survey before he would go and distribute wealth all over the world. It is alleged that God constituted a caravan. It's not in the Bible. This is my own version. He constituted a caravan, loaded it with gold, diamonds, oil, silver, graphite, all the minerals and underground wealth you can think of. Threw a lot of oil somewhere in Saudi Arabia, diamonds and other gold and minerals in South Africa, gave the Russians gas, 
scattered a lot of minerals all over the world. It is said that when God reached Congo, he was tired. So he told the angels, we got to go home. Let's leave whatever is left here. So all the wealth was left in Congo. So the angels protested and said, Almighty, this is unfair. Look at other countries that have nothing. Look at Japan. They have nothing. Now you have left everything to one country. He said that God then said, You think this is a blessing? Just wait and see the kind of leaders I'm going to give them. The rest, as they say, is history. We had a young man calling himself Ignatius Kangave Musazi. Why do people name their children after such people who have distinguished themselves? Incidentally, in my part of the country, there are a number of Kagutas. I think they have a problem with Museveni because of pronunciation of S. Because in our actually alphabet, we don't have S, so the danger of calling somebody Muchebeni would be very, very high. So Kaguta is easier. Because we don't have S, we don't have Z, we don't have V. There are many letters that we don't have. Now, this brings to mind our president's first book, Sowing the Mustard Seed. If you are a cultivator, you preserve the best crop to take back to the field so that that best crop can reproduce. It is therefore dangerous to eat seeds. Unfortunately, in this blessed continent of Africa, there's a lot of wastage of seeds, of people of potential, because of those issues that our president never tire of talking about. Identity politics, people retreating into tribal and religious cocoons. Therefore, in thanking my brother, Odrek Rabogo, I want to underline the mission of what he has been experimenting with. And it keeps getting better every year. This year, the spotlight is on Speaker Jacob Olana. But within that same spotlight are people who personify those qualities that made him to be a celebrated figure. In reality, we are celebrating the potential of Jacob Olanya. I don't think we got the best of him, and that's why the nation mourned. At a press conference held to announce this event and to inform the country that His Excellency had agreed to host us here, Jacob Olanya's son, Andrew, said that despite ja Jacob being of the NRM, and being very outspoken on many issues, when his body arrived in Uganda, people actually lined up the streets all the way from Entebbe to Kampala to honor him. That is very, very unusual. In my mind, therefore, Jacob Olanya can be rightly described as a fruit fallen and ripe. If you have a fruit on a tree, you look forward to the day that it is ripe and succulent, but one morning you find that the fruit has fallen and ripe. In other words, you have not got the best out of it. Your Excellency, this thing that Odrek Rabogo is tinkering with, and I believe it keeps growing, and we invite everybody here to support it, is about identifying equipping, and deploying leaders. Now, the hardest part 
is to identify. Because there are people who can pretend there's opportunism. Once people have positioned themselves and they have been identified, then their true colors come out. Equipping is what this mentorship is all about. Deploying is about which type of soil the seed will fall on. I know, Your Excellency, that the author of the book you wrote, I mean, the author of the preface or the foreword to the book you wrote was none other than Mwalimu Julius Nyerere. I believe you still remain Mwalimu Nyerere's intellectual heir. You also will have to have intellectual heirs, those who will have to embody your ideas. It is not enough to occupy your office. What matters most is that the ideas stay alive. So it is a process of nurturing and cultivation. We have leaders who leave a trail of light when they pass on earth. Jacob Olanya was such a leader. Then we have leaders who move around switching off all the lights they find and leave a trail of darkness. I think you know what it is like to grope in the dark and to have to, to light up your own way. I believe that's what you have been grappling with over the years because you found a trail of darkness which you have been struggling to light. Somebody said, we live in an era of guided missiles and misguided leaders. Odrek and I became amateur diplomats when you sent us to deliver your message to the Prime Minister of Ethiopia. We are really not real diplomats, but sometimes amateurs who have a mission are very effective as your own history of guerrilla warfare attests to. There were professionals who had undergone real training, but you sent them packing because of the sense of mission. So leadership is not about office. Leadership is about mission. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for celebrating Jacob Olanya and these values of leadership that he embodies. May God bless you all. Let us give another round of applause. <laughs> Honorable Mao, an astute orator, a good leader. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, for appointing Honorable Mao to the cabinet. I am sure that the cabinet had always lacked a Mao in it. <laughs>